NIS America is continuing to dive into their past catalog to bring classic Nippon Ichi software developed titles to modern platforms. However, with the release of Rhapsody Marl Kingdom Chronicles, Western gamers are getting two titles that have never received a localization in an official capacity. Rhapsody 2, Ballad of the Little Princess, and Rhapsody 3, Memories of Marl Kingdom. After playing through the previous releases within the Prinny Classics, I'm beginning to understand Nisa's approach to these remasters, and it shines in these titles that have yet to be released globally. Before we get into the review, we'd like to thank our Patreon supporters for making this possible. Please take a second to check out patreon.com slash noisypixel to support independent game journalism. I'm glad you came anyway. <laughs> Don't be so dis- After all, we're- <laughs> Rhapsody Marl Kingdom Chronicles continues the story of Rhapsody A Musical Adventure, which was initially released in the year 2000 on PlayStation. However, the game has since seen a DS release and was included in Prinny Presents NIS Classics Volume 3. Having said that, I would say that playing through a musical adventure is needed to completely understand the events of Rhapsody 2 and especially Rhapsody 3. Further, the other titles included in Volume 3 collection, La Pucelle, Ragnarok, is based in the same universe and ties into certain main characters. Release order aside, these stories rely heavily on character relationships with a specific timeline of events that requires some knowledge of to fully understand. On the other hand, it may still be possible to just jump in and enjoy some silly JRPG adventures within this cast. Rhapsody 2 picks up after the events of Rhapsody. You assume the role of Kururu, the daughter of the previous protagonist, Cornette, who now rules over Marl Kingdom. Much like her mom, Kururu wants to find love, but has a lot to learn before that happens. Still, she sets off on an adventure with her best friend, Kriya. The first three acts of the game serve as a way to introduce you to the few characters and set up the plot before Kududu finds her way on a much larger adventure. During this time, she keeps a journal of things she's learned but also must confront her own insecurities and how she carries herself. While there is an antagonist, I feel that Rhapsody 2 is a very low barrier of entry adventure. Nothing really needs saving and you'll mostly be playing to see how Kududu obtains her goals. However, the main hook is the exceptionally hilarious scenarios packed with tongue-in-cheek humor and innuendos. I found myself laughing several times at the reactions of the characters or just the motivations of some of the supporting cast. Also, I won't forget to mention the extremely refreshing musical elements where the characters break into song and dance during each act. Rhapsody 3 is less straightforward and serves as a way to tie up any loose ends within the scenarios. However, two of the more significant scenarios have already been included in the DS release of Rhapsody. Still, there are six chapters to learn what happened before and after the events of the entire series. The writing style is the same for this release, but the change to 3D environments did hurt my overall enjoyment. Rhapsody 2 features pre-rendered backgrounds, while Rhapsody 3 opted to utilize the same pixel character designs from the previous game, but place them in a 3D world. In terms of the remastered features, I believe Rhapsody 3 has seen the most improvements with crisper textures and fonts. Further, the game takes a few system ideas from the previous games and improves them, such as the auto battle option to choose how the characters attack, where previously you didn't have any control over it. I feel like Nisa opted to only enhance the graphics for modern platforms, but they left the experience untouched. For this release, I appreciated that choice, given that these titles have not been made available in the West until now. But this does mean that there's very little extra here in terms of added systems. You won't find an autosave feature, but you can save anywhere you wish. Still, I think the most significant additions is the English voices for the characters. The voice actors show off their expressions of their voice scenarios expertly, and they also closely match the way the characters sound during song numbers since they still have Japanese audio. The battle systems between each title, while turn-based, do vary in many ways. Rhapsody 2 is more traditional, where players choose the actions of each party member. Outside of the core party, some characters can equip puppets, which can add buffs to the characters alongside having their own equipment loadout options. These puppets gain levels over time, which unlock new abilities. Still, characters can also use their own special abilities if they wish. 
A strange system requires money to be used for puppet actions and HP to be used for special attacks. Kudoru will eventually gain enough points to use rewards, which are legendary attacks paired with silly animations such as dropping pancakes on an enemy. Rhapsody 3 allows players to place up to 12 characters in their party. This is made up of captured monsters, puppets, and supporting cast members. The battle systems also opted to utilize a more common SP system for specials. It's not as messy as it seems since only 4 characters are controlled by the player, with the other party members acting on their own. Equipment and customization are a bit more streamlined in this release, with quality of life features added to make battles quicker. While there isn't a traditional fast-forward option in either of the games, you are able to fast-forward through event scenes. Rhapsody 2 is by far the stronger title in this release, as it is an excellent reminder of how beautiful Pixar can be. There are also so many character animations and expressions that pack every scene with exciting things to look at. I was happy with the classic font choice Nisa win with, as it fits in perfectly with retaining the game's classic appeal. As for Rhapsody 3, there are some amazing adventures that take place in each of the chapters. Although I'd say that the entry is used more to wrap up loose ends, it also requires the most knowledge of the series. You'll pretty much be playing through the lives of these characters, seeing the kingdom evolve over time, and enjoying a low-stakes adventure with great pixel art. Rhapsody Morrow Kingdom Chronicles is the best classic collection from Nisa to date. They pulled out all the stops to present these titles in their original forms to new audiences, with a localization that retained the humorous tone of the scenarios. These games are pixel art at its finest. And while we don't see many titles like this anymore, I'm glad we have these modern releases to really enjoy alongside new titles released today. While Rhapsody 2 is the more rounded adventure, the collection as a whole is a must-play for any JRPG enthusiast. Noisy Pixel is giving Rhapsody Morrow Kingdom Chronicles an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixel is run by Kirby Gamers, providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy pixel.